In this video, I'm going to take you through the entirety of Argent de Nur, all of the arenas, and explain the thought process on how I analyze them, and how you can too for other Doom arenas. If you're looking to beat Ultra Nightmare, you need to watch this video. If not, it will have great takeaways for Doom Eternal, I bet you. My name is Austin, and let's dive right in. So the first thing I think about in an arena is what can I use up in the arena and what will I be able to have after it? So I know that there's a secret after this arena that has a chainsaw and a BFG, and there's also a chainsaw down below, but that's okay. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is not land like that. You can also double jump before, okay, perfect example right here. Train of thought changed. I saw that, we need to talk about that. I saw the BFG pop out of the enemy. So I'm thinking, all right, I have full right now. I need to send this, and grab that to not waste a BFG. You can wait a little bit of time, but I like to do it right away. Just goes to show you how quickly things can change in this game. As I was trying to say, you can double jump or shoot down with your Gauss to actually stop your impact compensation most of the time there. If you are going for 100%, you would want to take out those knights with the precision bolt instead of the siege mode for the challenge. One thing that's important to understand is how enemies function in the arena. So typically I'd want to wait let that summoner summon, according to my buddy Kelleroid. That way, all of the enemies are where she puts them instead of waiting for them to cycle in. But I'm just going to go ahead and grab the Berserk, and we'll go with it. Seek and Destroy, Savagery. If we're low on armor, Armored Offensive. If we're not, Blood Fuel. So as we look right now, we're actually full on armor. We can go straight over to Blood Fuel. Now, keep the Berserk running, of course, since the timer for Berserk does not drain if you are in the Glory Kill animation. So really, you don't have to use Savagery if you don't want to. So kind of keep in mind, watch for her. Also, it's important to understand the arena and the trigger enemies. We'll go more into that here in just shortly a little bit. But there's going to be a second summoner that spawns right up there that I'm going to have to keep my eye on and get ready for her. Okay, see what I mean about the menu not going down? See, right there. There she is. Let's go after her. I still haven't used the BFG that I have basically free for this arena. So we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we send one if there's enemies left. Okay, as soon as the Berserk ends, we go right back to Vacuum, Ammo Boost, Rich Get Richer if Armor is high, Equipment Power if it's low. Okay, haven't been dropping any Hollows yet. We can send one of these, we're just going to do it for the fun of it. Nope, that was a complete waste. So as I was editing this video, I found a few places of extra things I wanted to make sure I told you. Be sure to think about this video through the lens of Combat Chess. Everything can be dodged just like the old school retro games. No damage can be done technically. Think about that as you watch this. I think I know what's happening. This arena sometimes takes a minute to register once you finish it. You, you know, the music keeps playing, but then you actually end it. A little bit when you don't think you've actually ended it. All right, so let's go over to the first secret. Let's stop our jump there. So, like I said, I knew that I had a little bit of secrets coming up here. And I knew that I could afford to use the BFG and still be filling up here. What you can do here, these enemies are not affected by siphon grenades, otherwise we could farm up some armor here. So if you want to get armor, you just have to grab what you can get, or just do glory kill, anything you can. Alright, we're not going to skip this, we're going to take this way around. So we got the first arena, we're filled up on BFG, we're looking good with uh, 200 health and 142 armor. So we have to make a decision here in just a moment that I would like to tell you about. So let's work our way around here. There is a trick to go down lower if you want to. You know what? You guys have seen this plenty of times. So let's just drop down and skip all of this. Okay. That way would be to the Mega Health. This way would be right over here to this ledge. We're going to take the intended path first. And I'll show you why. You have to think about when you're in this situation. On any arena in this game and likely in Eternal. We have 200 health, 142 armor. I don't need that mega health. I can go back and get it. So knowing your skill level, knowing what you're comfortable with, you have to decide, do I need this mega now? Do I want to save it for later? There's a big 50 armor in this arena that you can take advantage of if you need to also. So at this point, I'm comfortable in saying, you know what? Let's not get the mega. It's all risk assessment and how you feel comfortable. Regardless of the way that you come in the arena, try to see who you can pick off before you actually get in the thick of it all. So we know there's a couple, look at him fall, that, that's pretty funny. There's a couple imps, there's a knight, there's a razor. It's also important to know where the arenas trigger whenever you step in. So what we're about to do is called a short circuit. This is something I learned from Bite Me and Red Warrior to great Ultra Nightmare 100% speedrunners. 
When you grab this quad damage that's up ahead, if you kill the Revenant at the top and at the bottom, you will short circuit this arena and cut out a wave of monsters. And you'll know you'll have done that if you see a Cacodemon spawn up ahead. So let's try that right here. Typically, you would wait to use the quad for later in the arena. That's normally Doom 2016 style, but this is a special case. Okay, so let's go up a little bit ahead. We're gonna skip that armor because we don't need it. See if we can get the short circuit. Got it, right there. Can't get even spawned, we are good. So in this arena, we know that there is a BFG that is up on the dolmen there. And we also know that there is one in the secret afterwards. So after we do the BFG, send it, I see it. There we go. Send it across, wait for the enemies to wave in and spawn in. That way you know you're getting maximum value for your BFGs. We'll do one more, send it. Now of course not every arena is this BFG friendly and it really just depends on ammo boost as well. I'm getting super lucky. Sometimes the Lost Souls seem to not appear, but regardless, you gotta watch out for- look at this. This is, in this is pure insanity. Look how actually OP ammo boost is. Now of course you would want to keep it- I don't believe it. I am recording? I am absolutely recording. This is unreal. I think we've almost gotten the arena done. So like I said, if you don't have BFG or you're doing a challenge run, it's important to understand where the enemies come in, what they do, but if you're just doing a standard playthrough, by all means, do it this way. Although I can't seem to find, you know what, let's send a BFG across the arena, see if we can find an enemy, or if we just glitched out. Did we possibly just glitch out? And the Lost Souls are the final wave. Sometimes they don't appear, sometimes they do. Okay. I think we're good now. So, remember that Mega we left out earlier? Now we get to go back and get it. It's important to know that there are ways to go back to different things. Halston from the future here. As I'm editing, I learned a better way to go about this. Check it out. You just scouse right up over to the left side. There's a little ledge if you need to, and you can get right back up. And if you don't have your gauss, I prefer to do a scroll jump up to here, weasel my way to the top, turn around, and jump all the way. Either way, you can get right back to that mega health. And we get the voice that comes along with it. So because we made that decision and because it paid off, we now get to enter the next arena with a full 200-200. Now remember what I said about having the BFG ammo. I know that if I leave this arena with one, having not grabbed the one up here, then I can come around and be full for the next battle. Check that out. All right, so just like before, you wanna know how the enemies are spawning, what they're doing. This arena has some interesting things about it that I think a lot of, look at that. Okay, so this situation's special. Let's see if we can pull this off. We're gonna come over here, trigger the enemies. Okay, I'm, I'm glad I got this on recording. There we go, vacuum soaked it up. Let me explain what happened there. Remember earlier I talked about getting the BFG, and if you get an extra from ammo boost, making the best use of it? Well, I had it trigger the enemies, and I knew when I go that far over, I can trigger them, blast the BFG, gauss myself back, and pick up the one I had missed. On the fly thinking, it just comes with practice and work, and you just have to keep at it. Trust me, it, it will come in time. You know, we all have things and all have ways that we can grow and improve on, and I hope I'm able to help with this video series and with these videos we're doing. So the first wave here of enemies, I usually like to stand up here in this arena. And remember, everything we go over here, while it is specific to Argent Dinner, as people call it, the same concepts can apply to other arenas. Now, I usually come over here and hit this pinky first, but things uh, got a little changed up. So we know that there's a BFG in this arena, and also we have the opportunity afterward in the description below, I will include a list of all the Mega Health and BFG locations in the game. So what I'm looking for on this one, I think I've already rushed it by accident, but that's okay. When you kill the first wave, the Cacodemon spawns in, and that's when you go to grab the Berserk. Yep, I rushed it. There should be a total of five Cyber Mankey that we are looking for in this. So we're high armor, pretty high armor. We'll, be, we'll do Blood Fueled. Remember, as you're making your way over to the Cyber Mankey Buy, glory kill anything else that you can along the way, learn their spawn points, Make sure you go from one to one and one to one. Okay. So I've kind of lost count, to be honest. One spawns back here. That's good. And like I said, this is applicable for any game, any arena. This is just particularly this one. And the turtle, like I said, it's going to work on there too. All right, we're a little bit lower on armor. At this point, I need to decide, am I comfortable where I am? Do I like blood fueled? You know what? Let's go to armored offensive, which is not mastered. According to Bite Me, if my information is correct, when this is mastered, you get eight armor from enemies and I believe 16 from Mancubi. Super helpful. So now we're go now we are going back to where we were. We have enough armor for RGR. 
I feel comfortable. You know what? Let's just do it. Let's just send it. Follow the follow the blast. Make sure there's no ammo boost that's going to pop another BFG. Looking good. Okay, make sure we don't get softlocked like that last arena. Nope, we're good. We're good. We still have still have some enemies. Situational awareness. If you've not watched my video on Ultra Nightmare, situational awareness, I highly recommend it. I cover things that I'm doing right now in this arena. Okay, so we're good here. Got it. There's the Baron. We're just going to chainsaw him for the fun of it. Why not? All right. He is the final one. It's important to know after those five Cyber Mankey buy, we take out some enemies. He is the final thing. He sometimes does not spawn. Let's just, uh, well, we can't get the Doom Guide all secret. So looking here, we have another BFG here, and we've actually undershot what we are able to do. Remember, there's the one in the arena, the one up top here, and I know that the secret has the Mega Health and the other BFG. So technically, well, we could have shot another shot and been okay. Sometimes you'll miss out on it, but it's just important to know where everything is and to do your best with it. Post edit tip number two, say you need to go back to the first Wraith Arena. You forgot a BFG or something like that. Just gauss back over to this rock. You can gauss up here or just jump up, find the way, and you can go right back to where you were. And just for fun, we're going to gauss up over here. Okay, back to the next arena. That was a really bad idea. You know why? You know why? Let's reload that checkpoint and I'll explain that. Okay, so we've already lost our BFG accidentally, but that's okay. I'll make the point here in just a minute. So let's say you're coming down through here. We know there's a BFG behind this door as well as a Mega Health. And I'm thinking, how comfortable do I feel with my current status of 200-109? You know, I feel pretty good about it. We're one BFG down, since I just shot one, and have a lot of health. So you know what? We'll wait for these. There is a way to get back, and I will show you here as soon as we finish this arena. Remember, mobility with the Gauss is super handy. This weapon does not just have damage to it, of course. So we'll do our same trick here, Instant Siege. If you'd like me to make a video talking about Instant Siege, I can definitely do that. It is a game changer as far as how you play. All right, so I had to make that judgment call. How do I feel? Do I feel okay? Yes, I do. So let's go ahead and send across the arena and see what we can come up with. Okay, we know the trigger happens here. We know that there are three ways. I also want to give a huge shout out to world record holder Bite Me for helping teach me about this arena and how it operates. The trigger enemies here are the Imps, Pinkies, and Knights. They're really the only enemies in the arena, but they are the ones that trigger this. So as we kill them, they will bring more of themselves in. Let's come over here. I used to stay over there. Kelleroid, who also is a Doomer, he likes to come over here. And whenever you're doing 0% or a no upgrade style run, I can understand why. So there is no BFG in this arena, and we know that the spider has two, so we have to figure out what we are comfortable with using. Okay, I'm glad a glitch didn't happen there. Sometimes when I have my BFG out and I use a hologram, it shoots the BFG instead. Ouch. Okay, so what we're looking at next, remember, you see, you can see them waving in like that, right? We have one more BFG, I don't, man, I don't really want to use it right now. Kind of want to hold on to it. I'm already developed doing bad habits. Imps and Har go well together. Here I am using a Gauss for a single Imp like that. When you do challenge runs and your ammo is limited, you begin to really, really, really think about <laughs> your Gauss ammunition usage and not do things like that. Okay, I'm intentionally holding on to this BFG. Well, okay, look, look. Let's wait for a wave to come in. I'm going to hold that. I'm not going to use that yet. I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to try to illustrate a point here the best I can, and I'm going to do this arena a little suboptimally to do that. Okay, went across. It's in. Okay, wave two is here. We need to do 250% damage collectively to the Mancubi in order to get the Barons to spawn in wave three. I've also held the quad damage to the very end. You'll want to do that if you want to get the hold still challenge complete. You'll definitely want to wait for that because you want to do a siege mode with the barons. Doing it with BFG is a little risky. So let's actually, let's, let's do this. In the name of the science, let's narrow this thing down. So we're going to do one Mancubus at a time. So we got our first one. Hmm. There is a finite pool of imps that spawns. Not too worried about them. They are good ammo sources. Notice Rich Get Richer still here. Okay, two Mancubi down. Let's find our third one and see if we can trigger in the Barons doing about a half of a health bar to that Mancubus. And again, if you were doing a real play, you wouldn't want to do it this much. 
rockets. Let's just shoot them with rockets. There it is. Look, right there. Baron spawn in. Right on cue. Right on cue. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I could have grabbed the power up at the beginning of phase two. Wave two, rather. Because with the suit being upgraded, it lasts a little bit longer. You have to know how fast can you personally clear it? What's your current skill level? And you have to do the risk assessment to figure out if it's worth it for you to grab it now or later. To summarize all that, how good do you feel about grabbing it early? Will it run out? We'll see. So now, ooh, that took it. Okay, perfect example, actually. I dropped under Rich Get Richer. In my head, I know, all right, look, we can go to equipment power because Rich Get Richer is off. You need to be cognizant of all this stuff going together, especially in Eternal, where there's going to be so much more stuff to think about. Also, you do not want to run up on an enemy when you don't have enough chainsaw fuel. I have done that and lost an Ultra Nightmare run before. Never, ever do that. All right. We'll just take care of the Barons. We'll do a... Yeah, let's try to get hold still there. Nope, missed it, but that's okay. Uh, we'll send a BFG. Now, I have also had on my 0% run, I took down the Baron, but the Caco Demon despawned. So apparently, there's some sort of trigger with the Baron. Either way, we got it, and he is dead, and he is done. A couple quick tips that I like to think about that I wanted to add in is that these power-ups, when you have the suit upgrade, you have to think of them as a full heal item out there on the battlefield. Just like I talked about in my three tips video, you need to consider when to grab it, when to heal, and put all of it together, though usually you want to use them near the end of the arena. So you can get back to the Mega and the BFG this way if you don't want to use any Gauss ammo or anything like that. You can just climb up and make your way back. Now if you really want to get creative, equip the in-flight mobility rune, see this middle wall here, scroll Gauss jump, and just literally climb your way up the wall. What? In-Flight Mobility is a very, very broken rune, so if you have any trouble with any of these jumps or their variations, use that and then try it. It should help you out. And of course, experiment. See what you can find. Made it. And now we can go back and get this. Like I said, it's all about the risk assessment and figuring out what you want to do. Thankfully, we get the other BFG down here and we get the Mega Hell. So that means we get Rich Get Richer back, we go into the boss with an extra BFG that we didn't need before, and we're good. Now, of course, this wouldn't be here if we grabbed it earlier, but I felt comfortable with it, I felt confident, and I was able to come back and grab it. I'm not sure if others have done it this way. I found this the other day experimenting, so if you found it before, let me know. All right. So as we come up here, we are going to have a BFG, and I'm going to do a little trick on the boss. I'll show you here in just a minute to think about how to approach her. Something I want you to watch for in this boss fight carefully is that when bosses get different health levels, they enter different phases, have different attacks, and give you health and ammo. So keep that in mind. Watch for that to happen. It's always good to be cognizant of that. All right, so keep in mind, holograms don't work on the bosses. Make sure your rune set is good. We're going to dive right on in. But wait, there's a twist. We're actually going to pull out the hologram. Why? You'll see. So for the boss, she's going to do a little juke thing over to the right. Always does it. Wait for it. Shoot off two BFGs back to back with the double tap trick. That's not actually necessary, but it's kind of fun. She's already down to half health. Already down to half health. So we're just going to keep doing the alpha rotation on her. We have another BFG. Watch for her attacks. She's about to do the electro floor, maybe? No, got tricked. Let's, let's drag this out a little bit. That way we get to see a few of her attacks. See, another BFG. I saw it get picked up. Watch what she does. Come into these arenas, practice, and take them out. This is a normal way. We got the Electro Floor, and I missed it right there. Just like I talked about my Situational Awareness video, you watch the keys of the enemies, you see what they do, and that was a mistake right there. I shouldn't have done the BFG to destroy the columns. Because now, I'm stuck on the floor. So I'll gas up and stay away from it. But now she's pretty much already dead. You know, we've actually not even been going as fast as we could be, and she is already almost dead. Gauss away, get that mobility, take our time with it, wait for it. She's going to go over to the end of the arena, so that means we need to watch out right now. Perfect. Perfect situational awareness. We could throw some holograms if we needed. She's probably going to do that. She's going to throw out her little attack here. You can dodge it, you can shoot it, whatever you want to do. Jump down a little early, but let's just finish her off. And let's end this level, and let's conclude the arena analysis of Doom 2016, specifically Argent Dinner. You know what? Let's just soak up some health. I'm going to show you, uh, let's see here. 
Yep. I've actually had a glitch before where I throw out a siphon and shoot my pistol immediately, and it locks everything up, and I cannot fire anymore. But since I want to beat the level, I don't want to do that. She's already done. Look at that. What do you think? In the comments below, let me know what your biggest takeaway was from this video. I hope it helps you go through my thought process of what I do when I approach the arenas. This will be able to be used in Eternal, for sure. Anywhere in Doom 2016, you can even apply it to Classic Doom. Be sure to watch some of these other videos for tips, tricks, and analysis to get ready and play Eternal or any other thing that you want to do with this series. And I will see you in the next video. Rip and tear. Sub to the channel if you like it, and I'll see you then.